Okay, we're gonna put on our serious hats now. Thanks for entertaining that, what a dream for us. All right, our next up is Christine. Christine teaches Figma at moonlearning.io. And Christine is obsessed with Mexican clamatoes. If you have a Mexican clamato, bring one, I don't, what is that? What is it, a clam, does anyone know what a Mexican clamato, clamato, tam clamato, clam tomato. I don't know, anyway, Christine's here from Madrid. Uh, it's my favorite city in the world, actually. And she's gonna present on tips for collaborating and sharing. Come on up, Christine. <laughs> Hello. Oh, wow. There's a few of you. Just Roger and Vanessa's closest friends today, right? Yeah, I like keeping it intimate around here. So, hi. I'm Christine, and I run an online learning platform called Moon Learning, where I talk and teach about UX, UI, and primarily Figma, which I guess is why I'm here today. And I especially love this magic area where design meets code. So, I brought you a few tips and tricks today um, around sharing, collaborating, and documenting in Figma. So my first advice would be, always store your components on sections. If you don't know about sections, then you find them in your top tool, um, top toolbar, right under frames, and you can also use the shortcut Shift and S. And then you just draw sections on your canvas as you would with frames. And as you saw, they became so much more relevant today. Now, oops, I have to go back. This is good that it's a small family event, so we can do these little things here, and just walk over and do that, great. So um, one thing I like about sections is that um, actually all the information around your component keeps on showing up. So you have the little symbol signs and everything. Now this seems really minor, but if someone enters your file that doesn't know it was its way around a file, then it's actually really great and they don't need to jump through the layers panel. Another thing is you can add more information to your section. So you can add frames with additional information. So here, for example, I'm pulling over an instance. Then I can open the new in-file preview, which we all love, which is shift and space, the shortcut. And so you can see the interactive behavior of your component right there. Now, just as with um, frames before, if you add your component, if you add your components to your sections, then that's going to create a folder in your assets panel, keeping everything nicely organized. And you can not only use sections for your components, but also for your overall design setup to organize everything. And today, my favorite feature that was launched: if you click on the name of that section, it should be. Yeah, here we go. You see this little symbol appear. Now you can mark your sections as ready for development. So if we then jump over to our new dev mode, and the shortcut for this is Shift and D, then you can see that now we have a designated area where we have all our designs and components that can move on to the next step. So really, really handy. Now, sections are not only useful when it comes to um, organizing and documenting, they're also great when it comes to prototyping because they make your design stateful. That means that if you connect to a section and Figma is going to remember the frame in that section that you last visited, if you jump back into the section from any other given place, then it's going to go back to where you left off. And this is incredibly helpful when we're building things like signups and checkouts. So in short, sections are perfect for grouping, contextualizing, and simply organizing your design system. But what if you already set up all this great documentation and information on frames? Don't worry. You can simply right-click any frame, and then you can convert it into a section. You could also use the preset drop-down for frames. And here, you can actually convert between frames, sections, and even groups, and obviously, um, all the way around that you want to. Now, setting up specs and documentation, however big or small that is now after the launch today, is a very time-consuming process. And I want to show you one of my favorite plugins, which is the 8Shape Specs plugin. Very long name, very quick name to document, a uh, very quick way to document. All you need to do is you drag out an instance, you click on that instance, run the plugin, and then with one click, this is going to create those amazing specs for you. 
Now, what I especially like is these specs are set up in little frames. So what we can do is we can pull over just the information that we want to, and we can add it to our section that we just set up with our component. And so we have everything in one place ready to mark for development the way that we want it to be. Now, if we're working, collaborating, then a lot of the time there are changes, and these changes might be very small. And this is where I love using the overlay comparison feature. So if you're getting, in your design mode, an update request for components, instead of just updating the entire file, what you can do is click on an instance, and then next to the instance name, you see this little circle appear. Now, with this circle, you can click to update available and then review the updates. And what you're going to get is a side-by-side -side comparison of your old component and your new component. And you can switch that over to overlay, and you can get the old and the new one on top of each other. Now, so far, we only had this in design mode. Today, as you saw, we also have this feature in our new dev mode. So it's the same thing. We go and have a look at the changes in our design. We now first get the side-by-side -side comparison with all the additional information. And now here as well, we can switch this over to overlay. In this case, this is entire pages of our design. Now, in those last five minutes, I've already been jumping back and forth in all our panels, and there are great shortcuts for this. Now, Alt-1 is the layer panel, Alt-2 is assets, Alt-8 design panel, and Alt-9 prototyping. I had to read that off my screen here, and you probably already forgot all of that while looking at this screen. But if you think of them in this way, then actually the place where they're positioned on your keyboard is the same place they're positioned in your Figma user interface, and you're surely not going to forget about them again. Um, I set up a little playground file for you in my community section. Visit figma.com forward slash learning, and then you can try out all of this yourself. And also, make sure to follow me on um, Moon Learning, Twitter, LinkedIn, and visit moonlearning.io. And thank you so much for your attention. I really, really appreciate it. Thanks so much. Oh, man. There are these stairs that we have to get up to, and this is like my fifth time doing it. I'm so tired. <laughs> okay, I feel like I'm a documenting pro now, and I don't know if I've ever seen anyone use sections so well. We also had a lot of commentary on Christine's voice. So, so, so calming. I want it on a recording. Headspace by Config. Hello. <laughs>